Over the past few years, I've made quite a few of my own hand tools. This includes everything from a square to hand plane, marking gauges, and even on my metalworking side, some holdfasts. In a hand plane video I made in 2013, a viewer commented and asked if my hand plane was still doing good. Wanted to know if it was still working out and if there was anything different I'd do. Well that gave me a great idea that maybe I should do like an updated video on all or at least most of the hand tools that I've made over the past couple of years. So let's go ahead and look at some of the tools that I've made. Okay so basically here we go. Here are two mallets that I've made over the years. Here's a holdfast, one of many that I've made over the years. I've made this one, I made, this was my very first one and it had a big huge squared front top and I like it, it holds great. This is my go-to holdfast. I also had this uh, pineapple twisted holdfast that I never finished up. I just kind of wanted to play with it and see what the top would look like. Here is a twisted topped holdfast that I made. I use this one quite often as well. It's got a little bit shorter of the top, so it's harder to work with some of the material. I wish I'd made it a little bit longer but it still holds just as well. Here is a square that I made, marking gauge. This was the first one I ever made. Here's a most recent one that I made in a video. And here is a hand plane I did. This is the, the hand plane that the comment was made on. And here's a marking knife. Okay, so first up we're gonna talk about one of my most recent builds and that is gonna be my mallet. This is my older one that I made. You guys saw me just build this one. This is my big huge one. I use this one only on like wooden handle things and stuff like that. I don't want to chip it up. This one's been chipped, dinged. I mean this one's been pretty much put through hell and back and it's still very good. I had a comment when I first made this one about having the cherry handle. I see absolutely no problem with it. It's still I don't see any flex, no cracks, anything like that. So, I mean, it's still strong. I don't know why having a cherry handle would have been bad. So, this one still works great. Next up is my square that I made. This was like one of my first ones that I made. This one actually is used with three different layers of plywood right here. And then it's got one right here coming I guess it's kind of like a uh, bridal joint that these are put together. I use this one quite a bit still on projects when I have longer pieces just because it has that longer end. So let's go ahead and check to see if it is still even 90 degrees. Well there you have it. You can see there's just barely a gap right here in this corner. Just barely. You'd be able to slide maybe two playing cards underneath that but along this side it's completely flat and from this point over it's touching so there's just a small little gap right here that could be like a miscut i guess so now that we know the square is 90 degrees and that still works great here is a marking gauge that i made this was quite a few years ago i think and pretty much just drilled holes in the middle to get that cut out and then created this little curved design, used a, um, a box cutter knife for the very top or the tip of it. And then it's just screwed down. You just unturn, undo that. I haven't used this one in a while. So I almost kind of get it apart. Couldn't figure out why. It felt like it was almost stuck. <laughs> that would have been a complete fail if I couldn't get this back apart. What ended up happening was that it was just spinning the whole entire shaft. So I guess an improvement on this one would be to actually put a nut in the bottom that would hold it so that the uh, actual bolt wouldn't be turning. The knurled nut on the top was just spinning the whole entire bolt or the screw so that might be an improvement on this one. Other than that you know it cuts fine and you got two sides that you can cut with and once one gets wore out you can just flip it around. So this one would still work if I actually would use it. Here's my most recent marking gauge right here. I just finished up the video on it and I use this one actually quite a bit. I've got these three other marking gauges that are the antique older ones. These two are regular and this one's a morticine gauge. I don't really use these ones. I try to use the one I made actually a lot more. 
it works great it's got a really sharp point on it because of the fresh nail in there but these ones have the measurements on there so that's why I like these ones right here so I really don't know why I have so many marking gauges I, I like them I guess so after looking at one of my takes on this video I actually noticed one of the tools I made here in the background which was this side cutting plane to match this other one for like when you have a dado and you gotta clean up the edge this was a fail this one worked at first and it just didn't work that well afterwards things happen the concept is great except when I put the hole in through the middle it didn't line up correctly so the blade kind of instead of being flat with the side it kind of goes inward and I just kind of make a new one I mean that's it to match this one and then it would work perfect the blade is perfectly fine it's still sharp and everything like that just it doesn't cut because it doesn't hang out of the side so after putting that one away I found another tool that I made a while ago I'm finding all these tools around I thought I had everything all set up and now I'm finding all these other things laying around but here's a mortising chisel that I made a while ago can you see it this was one of my first blacksmith projects because I needed a chisel that was wide and that would do the mortises and I ended up just making this this actually still works and I still use it quite often it's a smaller tip I have these two marples I think that's how you pronounce them I have these two mortising chisels and then this one kind of fits right in between so that's a win-win for me this still works the handle feels great this is one of those first uh, handles that I actually did a burned in handle where I heated up the metal and just shoved it right into the handle worked great epoxied it in and this sucker's never gonna come out so last but not least is the hand plane that the comment was made on first I wanted to know how it still felt how it still worked you know just kind of overall just let us get an update on it so we know if it's good to build or not my opinion yes why because you use scrap wood and use a table saw blade and just kind of repurpose it now granted eventually you can go ahead and upgrade the iron to something a little bit better than a table saw blade but does it cut yes have I replaced the blade no the iron is still the table saw blade that I cut up and did in the video Well, I'd say it still works. Does it work like a real hand plane? Almost there, but it's not exactly set up just like a real hand plane either. Okay, so what would I change about this? First, I would go ahead and take the corners, cut them off, and make it more round to get a better feel on the hands. Even on the front, I'd cut these off so you can actually hold it a little bit better. The size is perfect. I love the size of the hand plane. I guess pretty much the only thing that I don't like about this one is the squared off corners. It kind of gets to your hands after pushing a while on it, but the hand plane rides really good. It's really smooth. I think it looks good too. So thanks for joining me today on this short video. If you guys enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you guys are new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Check out all the other videos I have on my channel. And as always, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next video.